Zhang Zhizhen is a little-known tennis player who had never even reached high junior rankings, but who made it to the quarterfinals of an ATP Masters 1000 event in 2023 and made it to the top 100 ATP. He became the first Chinese tennis player to get this far after eliminating two top 20 ATP players on his way to the quarterfinal of the Matua Madrid Open. So this got everyone thinking. Is Zhang Zhizheng the new Chinese tennis sensation? Hello, 大家好,我是张志正。首先祝贺你啊,这一次是打。<laughs> the Chinese prodigy has had an interesting journey. Zhang was born in Shanghai in 1996 to a family with a strong history in sports. His father was a famous soccer player, and his mother used to be on the Shanghai shooting team. When he was young, his dad told him he could either swim or play tennis. He was already taking weekend tennis classes at the time, so he chose tennis out of the two sports. From 2008 to 2013, Zhang began his professional tennis career under the guidance of Xiao Donglu, making his debut at the ITF Futures Tour in 2012. His career was a little slow at first and had many ups and downs. Even though he managed to get his first win as a professional player against Daniel Yu at the 2012 Joplin Futures, he eventually lost to Gonzalez Austin. After that, he tried to compete in two more Futures events but lost in the first round both times. As the great tennis player Wu Di pointed out, Zhang had greater success on the doubles court than in singles. Zhang's singles career may have hit a few snags, but at least he found a winning partner on the doubles court. Yet fate had something exciting in store for Zhang in 2012. At just 16, he received a fortunate wildcard entry into the qualifying draw of the 2012 Shanghai Rolex Masters, though ultimately falling to Brian Baker. After taking a six-month break from professional events, Zhang made it to his 2013 ITF Men's Circuit appearance in May at the USA F12 Challenger. That's where Greg Ouellet beat the young player in three sets. Now, even though things weren't looking great, he still didn't lose hope and kept playing professional events on and off. That's how he made it through qualifying to play in the main draw of the 2013 Shanghai Challenger, which was his first ATP Challenger Tour event. Zhang then skipped half of the 2014 ITF men's circuit, playing in only 13 senior-level games. Things finally started looking better for him in 2015. In Turkey's 11th Futures game of the year, he beat Jan Zelensky and Bastian Trinket, but he still had trouble staying in good shape over the next few months. He lost in the first two rounds of every tournament he played in until June when he won the Mont de Marsan Futures event. It was Zhang's first ITF World Tennis Tour title. He kept doing well in French tournaments. Three weeks after his first Futures title, he made it to the final of another French competition, this time in bourg en bresse didn't give up and just keep trying, trying really hard. And uh, the result... Zhang's ranking went up after he did well on the 2015 ITF men's circuit. This was just the ITF tour, though. He started playing properly at events in the 2015 ATP Challenger Tour. But in the first few months, he didn't win any main draw matches. Zhang then played his first match on the ATP Tour at the Zhenzhen Open in 2015. As an amateur, he beat the Japanese player Goso Eda in straight sets in the first round. That was a pretty big deal, especially for someone as inexperienced as him. But then, he eventually lost to sixth seed Yichi Vesely in straight sets. Zhang's game was still inconsistent. Even after qualifying for the Beijing Open and Shanghai Masters, he couldn't get to the main draw of either event. He ended 2015 with a few early losses in challenger events. In 2016, Zhang's injury forced him to skip the first four months of the ATP World Tour. His return to the court saw him face early losses, but he still competed in the ATP Challenger Tour event and the ATP Tour 250 tournament in Nice. That's where he lost a third set tiebreaker to future world number one Daniel Medvedev in the second round of qualifying. It wasn't a good year for him because he lost in the first or second round of whatever tournament he took part in. Unfortunately, his ranking plummeted, dropping over 400 places to finish outside the top 800. Zhang's tennis journey in 2016 was like a roller coaster ride, but with more downs than ups. It seems he took falling in the rankings a bit too literally. In 2017, Zhang made a remarkable comeback despite his low ranking. He reached multiple Futures Finals, including an exciting showdown with Alexander Sarkisian. Zhang's hard work paid off with a victory at the Zhenzhen Futures Tournament and a runner-up finish in Yinchuan. 
In the 2017 ATP Challenger Tour, Zhang didn't have to go through any more qualifying rounds because he had pretty much secured his place in the ATP. After defeating Paolo Lorenzi, ranked 39th at the Zhenzhen Open, his performance helped him reach the quarterfinals where he narrowly lost to Henry Laksanen. That's not all though, he also won the China Grand Prix at the same time and ended 2017 at a rank of 342. He didn't accomplish any big wins in 2018, but he triumphed at the 2019 Jinyan International Open where he defeated top 100 player Sun Wun Kwan. Also, he made it to the second round of both the 2019 Zhuhai Championships and the 2019 China Open. At the China Open, he lost against top 5 player and eventual champion Dominic Thiem. Before their match, even Thiem said that Zhang is a great player, he has an advantage because he plays at home you always act a few percent better. After winning a second challenger title, he was ranked 360 by the end of 2019. 2020 was an uneventful season for him because of the pandemic. After that, even though he became the first Chinese male player to qualify for Wimbledon in 2021, he was injured and had to take a break. But Zhang was not done yet. He staged a remarkable comeback in 2022, leaving a trail of success in his wake. The icing on the cake was his triumph in two challenger events, breaking a three-year title drought. These exceptional performances propelled him to a ranking of number 99 in the ATP. He was the first Chinese male player to have reached the top 100 of the ATP ranks in the Open era. It was a great uh, experience. That's um, top 100 is uh, our goal. I mean, like everyone was impressed. The reporter Zhang Bendu stated that China has achieved so many great things, but we couldn't even produce one ATP Top 100 player for such a long time, which is really unthinkable. For Zhang, finally conquering that goal, it was a big success and relief as well for Chinese people, especially sports fans here. And the journey continued for Zhang Zhijin in 2023. The Matua Madrid Open witnessed his extraordinary display of skills. He started by winning his first ever Masters match against Yuri Rodionov, creating a buzz around his name. Zhang carried that momentum forward, defeating Denis Shapovalov to reach the third round, a feat he had never accomplished in a Masters tournament before. He also won against Cameron Norrie, who was in the top 15 ATP. The stage was set for Zhang to create more magic and leave an even greater impact on the tennis world. Zhang's victory against Taylor Fritz to reach the quarterfinals in Madrid was well-deserved because he had been working towards it for quite some time. The type didn't really even think about ranking because you just need to give it all the best you can. It's a close match, you know, and in the end, it's, I can win, that's amazing, yeah. Even if he hadn't reached higher rankings before, he had always been ambitious. When asked in an interview about rankings, he said that his goal is to still step on 50 and he could even imagine making it to number one. Also, 100 is a goal for us. And then now I'll put the goal to, um, to April. So it's very good time to, to try and to go higher. Even Wu Di, who is one of the best Chinese players in history, said he has for sure the shots for the top 50 or top 30. Keep in mind that what made his win so impressive was the way he managed to beat many top-ranked players to accomplish what he did, plus how he moved up 70 spots in the rankings and is now at number 69 in the world. Sure, other Chinese players like Wu Yibing and Shang Zhucheng have become much more famous in the tennis world, but as Zhang showed in Madrid, he possesses the ability to compete with some of the world's finest players. Otherwise, defeating previous Neto ATP Finals rivals and Masters 1000s champions like Nori and Fritz would be impossible. What makes him different is that, unlike other Asian Chinese players, Zhang isn't injury prone or small in comparison to Western players. Like Bendu said, he is tall and strong and he is all about power. That's what makes him different from Wu and Zhang. With his height at 6 foot 4 inches and a strong build, he has the potential for some powerful serves that could help him rise even higher in future ATP events. It was also what gave him a significant advantage in Madrid, even though Karatsev ended his run in Madrid not long after he qualified. This player has already caught the world's attention. Zhang is one of China's best tennis players currently, and he's set up to do even better in the future thanks to his steady and excellent results.